Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking apart the GTX 1080 Ti that just over a year ago I ripped apart and applied liquid metal to the GPU die itself to see if I could drop temperatures a little bit. Today our goal is a little bit different. Now we're taking the card back apart to see how well that liquid metal aged over an entire year of fairly heavy usage. But before we do that, this is one of the final plugs I'll give for the Ryzen 5 3600X giveaway. It's a North America only giveaway. If you've not entered, you have something like a day or two left to get entered into this competition, or rather this drawing. There's really nothing to compete over, but you have about a day or two left to enter for a chance to win the Ryzen 5 3600X for free. Again, North America only, link in the description. So to get started the disassembly process with this particular EVGA SC2 1080Ti is actually really, really simple. You just take a bunch of screws out of the back plate, pull the card apart, and you have access to the GPU die itself. Now, once we got the card apart and taking a look really closely at the GPU die with the liquid metal still applied, it looks brand new. At least the liquid metal itself looks absolutely brand new. In fact, if you were to give me a comparison shot of today versus a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to tell the age of the liquid metal based on just looking at it sitting on the GPU die. Now, the one place I would have been able to tell the difference is where the liquid metal actually was off the GPU die in a couple of spots where I had apparently over applied the liquid metal the first time around just a little bit. Now, that would be a major problem because there are some SMTs around the GPU die that could be shorted out by liquid metal because it is a metal product, it will short out components if it comes into contact where it shouldn't be coming into contact with. Luckily, I used nail polish to insulate those SMTs the first time around, so I just coated them with a little bit of nail polish and then applied the liquid metal. So none of my SMTs were shorted out, the card was still working just perfectly. So while the nail polish is not necessarily required, it's something I highly recommend as a precautionary step because it did potentially save me a lot of headache based on that uh, little bit of liquid metal squeezing out between the uh, cooler and the GPU die itself. Now getting liquid metal off of the GPU die and off of the cooler is a little bit more difficult than with traditional thermal paste. I used a dry Q-tip and just sort of wiped over it and some of the liquid metal would beat up and then easily be wiped away by the Q-tip. Your results may vary. I'm sure there are some documents out there and some forums where people have better methods, but that's what I used and it worked just fine. Now once the cooler and the GPU die were cleaned off completely, I noticed a whole lot of nothing special whatsoever. The cooler looked pretty much brand new and the GPU die looked absolutely fine as well. So there was really no signs of corrosion that I could see that uh, this liquid metal was damaging or anything like that. None of that was present on my card. Now it is worth noting that I had no aluminum that came into direct contact with the uh, liquid metal. And that's really important because gallium in the liquid metal and aluminum do not mix whatsoever. Uh, it's a very aggressive reaction that would result in a dead cooler if the aluminum was on the cooler, in fact, and your card would likely overheat very quickly as a result. So if you do have a GPU with an aluminum-based cooler, then this is not something you're going to want to do. I will try to remember to link like a video of an aluminum can reacting with gallium, but basically it's a very quick reaction. You would know within probably a day and really probably even sooner than that if you're actually using the card and it would result in a dead GPU cooler and possibly more damage to the actual card itself. Not something you want to get into. So if you are planning on using liquid metal, make sure anything coming into contact with the liquid metal is not aluminum. Now for reassembly, I actually went with a different thermal compound altogether. I went with MX4 from Arctic, and that's mostly because I didn't have any more liquid metal just laying around to actually reapply to this card. But MX4, I will sacrifice a little bit in temperatures, but I do get the peace of mind of not having to worry whatsoever about it shorting any components out or anything like that. So after I applied the new thermal paste, I reassembled the card and it is back in my main system working. And in fact, this video is being edited on this main system. So we're all good to go. And that is my experience with liquid metal on a GPU for just over one full calendar year. But if you have used liquid metal, I do wanna hear from you. What's your results been over the long term? Have you had any sort of issues, any sort of corrosion? Because I know there are some conflicting sort of reports on different forums. Some people claiming they've had massive corrosion and even in non-aluminum parts like nickel plated parts, uh, they've seen corrosion there. 
I didn't see any evidence of that with my particular use case, but maybe you have and I want to hear from you in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.